Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Caught on camera, two men accused of trying to rob the home of a son and his elderly mother at gunpoint can be seen just moments before that crime. It happened in the 400 block of Porter Street on the southeast side. The victim, who was pistol whipped, tells the night team's Jaffney Gray she wants the suspects caught for the sake of his mother's safety. I was fighting this. He, he told me, give me your money, mother. Adrian Hernandez reliving a scary experience that happened around midnight Saturday. San Antonio police say two suspects captured here on Hernandez's surveillance video entered his home in the 400 block of Porter Street. He opened the door and he went inside. In that door, it was locked. Hernandez says he was getting out of the shower when he realized the men were inside. Turning point me and he came in with a pistol. He said he then ran to his bathroom. I closed the door. He was banging the door. When he let go the door, I don't, he shoot a pistol. Hernandez said as soon as the door opened, he noticed another man sitting in his bedroom chair. That's when he started to fight. I was fighting with him. I was bleeding when he, the first hit with a pistol. At the time of the home invasion, Hernandez said his now ex-girlfriend, sister, and his mother were there. Both he and his mom sustained injuries. Does it hurt you? Yes, I, I got a lot of pain and, and my brain is going ba ba ba. The two masked men left empty handed. Hernandez said he believes his ex set the entire thing up, but that has not been confirmed with police. He said while he hopes everyone involved turns themselves in, he will be working closely with his lawyers and investigators to get them off the streets. Are you scared? No, I am not scared. I scared for my mother, not for me. Again, San Antonio police have not confirmed whether or not the victim's ex-girlfriend was involved, but there are two suspects still at large tonight. They're asking anyone with any information that can lead to an arrest to call police. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. A disturbing story. Thank you, Jaffney. Other top stories we're following today. A south side stabbing sends one to the hospital. It all started around 4 o'clock this morning at the Robin's Nest Apartments located off of Hot Wells near South New Braunfels. Police say the victim was in the parking lot when three people walked up to him claiming he owed them money. That's when one of the suspects allegedly stabbed the man twice in the arm. He was later taken to the hospital. Police are still looking for the suspects, but did find the knife used in the attack at the scene. Police say a man is facing two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after he allegedly fired 25 rounds into the ceiling of an apartment. It happened just before 1 a.m. on Noblewood Drive, not far from East Houston Street. An officer was driving by when she heard gunshots. After arriving on scene, police say witnesses were pointing towards the suspect, 23-year-old Felipe Moreno, who was arrested on site. Police learned Moreno was allegedly arguing with a girlfriend before the incident. He's also accused of hitting that girlfriend in the head. A proposed paved trail extension at McAllister Park is raising lots of concerns for park goers. The night team's John Paul Barajas spoke with a woman who started a petition to keep an all natural trail the way it is. McAllister Park draws all types of crowds, and for some, going there to enjoy the nature it offers has become a family tradition. As a kid, I used to come here a lot with my mom, but now I'm bringing her here to check it out, so, and she's having a good time. For Robert Singleton and his daughter, they enjoy all aspects of the park, portions that were man-made and parts that are as Mother Nature created. They had no idea the city was looking to put a paved trail through Mud Creek, one of the last all-natural trails in the city. Something Marjeska Brown started a petition to try and stop. I'm not saying don't do the greenway at all. I'm asking, please route it in an area that doesn't have so much impact on the natural environment. Brown says keeping Mud Creek Loop undeveloped is much more than just about protecting the environment. It's about giving people an opportunity to connect with nature and enjoy it in an all-natural setting. From their kids' perspective, they've said, you know, concrete feels like a sidewalk and we can walk on a sidewalk at home and, and, a, and a sidewalk's boring. So they feel like real adventures out there on the dirt trails. 
She explains that's just one of many comments she's gotten from the people who have signed her petition. According to the city, in a statement, they say in discussions with park stakeholders, this path was identified as the shortest and clearest route, minimizing impacts to trees and other natural resources. I can't say that I agree with that statement. Brown showed us the city proposed route highlighted in red and her alternative route in light purple. You can see that it clearly has more impact to trees and natural resources than an alternate route would. Right now, Brown's petition has nearly 2,000 signatures, and she's hoping for a lot more. As for the city, they add that they do have a planned meeting for community feedback, but they don't have a date yet. They also said no money has been allocated to the trail extension project. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Well, from the trails to the river, following days of heavy rainfall, the San Antonio River was filled with more than just water. The aftermath of the rainy weather brought extra trash to the waterway, prompting a cleanup from volunteers and River Aid San Antonio. Usually there's a whole group of volunteers that show up to assist the cleanup efforts, but today Rasa said only three people showed up. We will not have enough volunteers until there's actual infrastructure implemented to stop this trash from getting down here. So we need everyone we can get. There's always going to be more trash down here. Rasa Interim Director Charles Blank adds plastic is a problem San Antonio has inherited, but people can take action to make a difference. The next cleanup day is set for Sunday, July 18th at 8 a.m. at Headwaters Sanctuary at Incarnate Word. Texas legislators have spent all weekend discussing controversial voting legislation after Senate Bill 7 failed to pass during the regular session. After hours of debating uh, of debate spanning two days, Senate and House committees moved forward with new versions of the voting legislation. Those bills are similar to seven, Senate Bill 7, which House Democrats walked out on during the regular legislative session. The bill would ban 24-hour voting and drive-through voting. The legislation would also require someone to request a mail-in ballot in order to be sent one. Even Democrats in the Texas House of Representatives, they agree uh, that as it concerns mail-in ballots, uh, that is an area where improving the mail-in ballot system is a way to achieve greater election integrity. But House Democratic Caucus Chair Chris Turner released a statement saying in part, you just can't make this up. Republicans are passing anti-voter legislation overnight to prohibit Texans from casting a ballot overnight, end quote. This is just the first item of an 11 item agenda for the special session, which includes bills related to critical race theory and transgender youth, notably absent from that special session, anything regarding the power grid reform. Now to the death toll in the condo collapse in Surf Surfside, Florida, rising to 90 on this 18th day of search and recovery operations. 71 of the victims have been positively identified and their next of kin has been notified. That leaves 31 residents of the Champlain Tower South who are still unaccounted for and left potentially still buried in the rubble. Personal belongings like rings, jewelry, and even unbroken wine bottles are being recovered and returned to their owners when possible. It could be the smallest little thing that to, to a common person, it just looks like a, a little container, but it really means generations. It's, it's very spiritual, and I'm just so impressed. About our officers are learning so much about culture that it, there's just so many dynamics here with the sadness and the sorrow. There's, there's like a unity component. We learn about each other, so we would definitely respect that and honor that. As the recovery operation continues, more than 14 million pounds of concrete and debris have been removed from the site as of this morning. Outside with live cam tonight. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We had some rain around yesterday. Today, no rain, but something else filling our skies. Yes, Saharan dust, our first round this year did start to filter in today. And this plume that moved in uh, today, you may have noticed hazy skies. It is going to continue continue to move through on Monday and it could be a little more dense at times tomorrow. We are going to talk in detail about this Saharan dust. If maybe you've just moved here in the last year, this may be something kind of new to you. So we'll talk all about this dust coming up shortly. We'll also talk about a drop in rain chances for the week ahead and an increase in temperatures. Your full forecast will be along in just a bit. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. 
Proton therapy, it's an advanced cancer radiation technique that better targets tumors without harming the tissue around them. The facilities are expensive and complex, but within two years, South Texas will have one at UT Health San Antonio. If you have a cancerous tumor next to a vital organ or tissue, general radiation can be dangerous and many times too risky. Standard radiation, or what we call gamma radiation, enters and exits the body, and it deposits its radiation dose across that entire pathway from the time it breaks skin to the time it exits on the other side. That damages otherwise healthy surrounding tissue. Proton therapy spares that tissue. The protons have some unique properties that allow us to be more precise in what we do, deliver higher doses to the target or the tumor, and give less dose to those surrounding normal tissues. Dr. Mark Bonin is the chief medical officer of the Mays Cancer Center at UT Health San Antonio and is thrilled to announce they will break ground this summer on a new proton therapy facility on Floyd Curl Drive in the medical center. With a $65 million price tag and a complex design to fit the three-story machine that performs the therapy, this facility is rare, one of just 40 in the U.S. The other facilities in Texas are in Houston and Dallas. Uh, And, you know, generally radiation treatments like proton therapy average run Monday through Friday for about six weeks. So if you require or if you would benefit from proton therapy right now, if you live in San Antonio, you're going to have to basically relocate for a month and a half. The new facility will allow local cancer patients who qualify to stay home while they get the -the state-of-the-art treatment. It's about 10 to 15 percent of all general radiation patients that'll benefit from proton therapy. The most common patients are children, since radiation on any growing normal tissue is detrimental. But it's also used for brain, head, neck, lung, and prostate cancers, targeting the cancer, salvaging healthy tissue, and ultimately saving more lives. An incredible technology. Again, they are expected to break ground on the new facility at the end of the summer. They're hoping to treat their first patient in September of 2023. Still to come on the night beat, an historic day in space travel. Billionaire Richard Branson taking off just a little more than a week before Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is set to launch his own craft. We'll recap the day's events. Plus, several guns found in a Denver hotel room just down the street from where the MLB All-Star Game is set to take place this week. The latest from the scene. With the Delta variant on the rise in at least 25 states, vaccination rates are varying across the country. Yeah, fewer people are getting vaccinated in states led by Republicans, while 75 percent of adults in mostly Democratic Northeast say they have received at least one shot. Meanwhile, the Midwest showing the highest level of resistance, with just 27 percent saying they will not get vaccinated. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with the latest on the Delta variant and the push to encourage everyone to roll up their sleeves. A growing concern over the Delta variant, which is now the dominant strain of COVID in the U.S., and it's driving up daily caseloads in at least 25 states. According to the CDC, 99.7% of current infections are among those who are not vaccinated. A recent ABC News Washington Post poll found 93% of Democrats said they were or plan to get vaccinated, while only 49% of Republicans said the same. This is no time for politics. This is a public health issue, and viruses and public health don't know the difference between a Democrat, a Republican, or an independent. In Arkansas, a state with one of the lowest vaccination rates, cases have increased a staggering 110% over the past two weeks. Yet, many are still hesitant to get the shot. We're working very hard to uh, go to that population through the employer, through trusted advisors such as the clinics, making sure they have the information and overcoming the hesitancy or just the simply we're putting it off approach. But it's not just the number of cases that's on the rise. Hospitalizations are also increasing. We're seeing a lot of more intubations this go around younger people that are getting this Delta variant. In Missouri, Springfield's Mercy Hospital is now borrowing ventilators and pleading for more respiratory therapists to help handle the growing number of COVID patients. Wisconsin father Mike Berry contracted COVID before vaccines were widely available. You need to protect yourself from the virus so that you don't go through what I went through. I was resuscitated twice, heart surgery, kidney failure. There's a long list of things that 
that the, the virus did to me. He was welcomed home this weekend after spending nearly six months in the hospital. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a return of the sunshine and something else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's not more rain. I know that yeah. your backyard took a beating. Some oh, people yes. are really just excited to see the sun. It's, there's always something, though. Yeah, m much brighter today, but as soon as we get rid of the rain, something else moves in, and that is the Saharan dust. Chances are you probably heard a lot about this on social media this weekend, and it is that time of year. I want to show you a couple of pictures today sent in to us via uh, our pins in the KSAT weather app. If you ever have a picture of the Saharan dust or just a weather picture in general, you can share it with us via the KSAT weather app. Just head over to the pins tab. Uh, this was from Taylor this evening. Uh, looking off to the west there, the sunshine itself covered up by some high cloud cover. But uh, as Taylor says, you can definitely see the dust out there. It just makes things look hazy and I love this, a, a dusky sunset. Very, uh, very appropriate way to describe our sunset this evening. So our first plume of Saharan dust for the year has moved in this weekend. It will continue to move north into Texas during the day tomorrow, and I do think it could be a little bit more dense at times tomorrow. So I'll turn your attention to this legend here in the top right hand corner. The lighter browns, that's less dense dust. The darker browns, that's more dense dust. And the denser that this dust is, say that five times fast, uh, that's when things turn even more hazy. And that's when air quality can potentially take a hit. We did see that happen one day last year with one of these plumes that was particularly dense. Tomorrow, we're going to be moderate here. For the most part, I do think it could start to look even more hazy tomorrow at times. Uh, but the good news is this plume, this initial plume, will start to filter out on Tuesday. By Wednesday, our sky should look much brighter and more blue. Similar case on Thursday. But as we get into late this week, Friday, it does look like another larger plume will start to filter in. So we'll see that dust return toward the end of the week. And this is fairly typical for this time of year. If you're not familiar with the Saharan dust, it's literally big plumes of dust that get picked up from the Saharan desert in Africa. They get carried across the Atlantic from the trade winds near the equator, eventually pushed into the Caribbean, even the Gulf of Mexico, and sometimes they make it all the way to us here in Texas. So that's what's going on. Just a few things to remember. This dust can cause allergy like symptoms for a lot of people. Today, my eyes were burning, kind of tingly. I had kind of the, the headache that I get during mountain cedar time. So you may be experiencing some of that. It may also have to do with the high mold count, but it may be because of the dust. We get hazy skies, vibrant sunsets, and just keep in mind that the, these plumes will come and go not only this week, but also probably for the next couple of months. And uh, we'll, of course, keep you updated. High temperatures today, 89 in San Antonio, still below our average this time of year. And we're going to see our high temperatures this week jump back up to where they should be. This is pretty typical for July low to mid 90s with some spotty rain chances. So tonight we do have some thunderstorms well off to our north from San Angelo over to Waco. These are not moving much. In fact, they're starting to move off to the north. So this activity will stay out of our area overnight and I'm going to keep our forecast quiet through the overnight hours. We will see low clouds build in through early tomorrow morning. I can't rule out a few early morning sprinkles, but generally pretty quiet. As we get into tomorrow afternoon, I'll be watching a complex of storms off to the northeast closer to the college station area. A couple of leftover storms there could try to wander our direction tomorrow afternoon, but overall most folks stay dry on Monday and as we head into Tuesday, our rain chances will move down to the southeast of San Antonio uh, closer to the Gulf Coast. So really isolated rain chances in the week ahead. Overnight temperatures in the 70s, cloudy skies, 20% chance of a spotty shower or non severe storm tomorrow afternoon, but mainly just hot and that's what we're looking at. This week, we'll talk a little bit more uh, about the dust coming up next half hour, guys. Looks a little more like July there on the Yeah, <laughs> looking more normal. Yeah. All right, thanks. We'll be right back. The first three games of the NBA Finals between the Phoenix Suns and Milwaukee Bucks are in the books now. And what a game three it was for Milwaukee. With more on that and what's on instant replay tonight, let's check in with our Greg Simmons. Yeah. Dominant performance. Put, put it mildly, the Bucks are back thanks yeah. to Giannis Antetokounmpo and that. 40 plus point performance and a shocker team USA upset by Nigeria in the first exhibition game before the 2020 Tokyo Olympics coming up tonight on a brand new edition of instant replay against holiday inside block from behind. 
Holiday behind the back. Middleton back to Holiday. Inside, Portis for the slam. <laughs> wow. After losing the first two games of the NBA Finals, the Milwaukee Bucks looking for a comeback now that the best of seven series has moved to Milwaukee, and they got it. To make this a series again, instead of being one loss away from elimination, we will show you. I, I thought that uh, the Nigerian team played uh, very physically, uh, did a great job in that regard, and knocked down a lot of threes. That's Pops, that's Pops' initial reaction after Team USA's stunning loss in Nigeria in the first exhibition game before they depart for the Olympics in Tokyo later this month. What went wrong against the 28-and-a-half-point underdogs? We will show you. Landale back to Mills for the win! Up next for Pop and Team USA is Australia after Spurs guard Patty Mills hit the game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer to beat Argentina. Now they face off against USA men's basketball. We'll get you ready for Monday's showdown. All that plus soccer highlights from across the pond to right here in the Alamo Dome. Fight night in the AT&T Center is less than a week away. And where will the U.S. men's basketball team finish in the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo? Tonight you decide. Instant replay is live and it's after the night beats. Lots to discuss tonight. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. We'll see you in just a little bit. We'll see you right after this break. Richard Branson successfully traveled on his Virgin Galactic spaceship more than 50 miles above the Earth's surface before safely returning to solid ground. Yeah, here's ABC's Gio Benitez with the details of this historic trip. Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson and his crew of five now safely back on Earth. I have dreamt of this moment since I was a kid and that honestly nothing could prepare you for uh, the view of Earth from space. The trip, an historic step in commercial space travel, Branson becoming the first person to blast off in his own spaceship. Crowds greeted Branson and his spaceship Unity crew Sunday morning as they arrived for the launch from the spaceport in the New Mexico desert. Unlike traditional rockets that launch vertically, the spaceship Unity took off tethered to a mothership, the VMS Eve, named for Branson's late mother. After being released from Eve, the rocket ignited and the spacecraft shot up towards space, traveling more than 53 miles above the Earth's surface. So I looked out the window and it was just, the view was just stunning. Branson had been scheduled to fly into space late this summer or early fall, but moved up his flight, winning the so-called billionaire space race. Congratulations to everybody for, uh, for creating such a beautiful, beautiful place. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is scheduled to fly on his own Blue Origin capsule on July 20th. Bezos wishing Branson luck Saturday in a post on Instagram. This was the Virgin spaceship's fourth trip to the edge of space since 2018, and Virgin Galactic, founded by Branson in 2004, says it will soon start flying paying customers to space on similar trips, opening up a new era in human space travel. We've got to all be doing everything we can to help this uh, incredible planet we live on. Um, I will devote the rest of my life doing that. And, and, um, and I think other people who go to space with us will devote the rest of their lives doing that. Virgin Galactic has two more test flights scheduled this year. They intend to start commercial operations next year. Gio Benitez, ABC News at Spaceport America in New Mexico. Taking a look at headlines around America now, four people were arrested Friday after a hotel employee alerted authorities about several weapons being stored inside a room at the Hotel Maven in Denver. That hotel about one block away from Coors Field, where the MLB All-Star Game will be taking place this Tuesday. Denver police say they feared a Las Vegas-style shooting during the game after they were tipped off about the weapons by a hotel maid. After obtaining a search warrant, searching two rooms and impounding two vehicles, three men and a woman were arrested. So thank you to whoever reported what they saw because they could have circumvented a catastrophe. The four people who were arrested now facing numerous weapons and drug related charges. Today in our nation's capital, people of all backgrounds came together for a rally held in solidarity with Jewish people amid rising anti-Semitism. The rally, titled No Fear, a rally in solidarity with the Jewish people, featured faith leaders, several elected officials, activists, celebrities, and more. It is time that we stand up and be unafraid. For far too long, our people have been terrified to speak out against anti-Semitic hate. In our community, anti-Semitism goes underreported, and enough is enough. 
Also among the speakers, Alicia Weisel, son of Holocaust survivor Ellie Weisel, who accounted his time in concentration camps in the best-selling book Night, which has helped educate many students on the Holocaust since it was published. Meanwhile, the White House says a team is being sent to Haiti to provide assistance following the assassination of President Jovenel Moise. The delegation includes experts from the National Security Council, the State Department, Justice Department, and Homeland Security. The Biden administration wants to find out who was responsible for the crime and hold them accountable, as well as help to stabilize that situation. A Pentagon spokesperson says they are also reviewing a request to send hundreds of U.S. troops into Haiti, but that decision is still under review. The delegation will engage with the Haitian government to learn more about their needs and then brief President Biden upon their return. Another look outside with live cam tonight. We're going to talk more about our local forecast coming up here in just a little bit, but I want to take you out to New Mexico tonight where Virgin Galactic had their launch earlier today, Spaceport America. If you're wondering where that is, everyone's just been saying New Mexico. It's north of Las Cruces and east of Truth or Consequences uh, in a pretty rural part of New Mexico here. It's actually northeast of Hatch and east of truth or consequences. They've had some rough weather today, severe thunderstorms, also some flash flooding. So good job with the timing this morning, guys. I'm sure that was just a happy coincidence. You didn't look into the weather at all. Good job. Uh, 80 now at the airport, mostly cloudy, very humid, calm winds. It is going to be a muggy night, muggy start to the day tomorrow, and another hot afternoon to get our week started on Monday. More on our local forecast coming up in a bit. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Well, their bond only deepened after a single father shared his life's passions with his talented daughter. They're next on What's Up South Texas. As a single father, he put his music goals on hold for his daughter's future. Now his young daughter has fallen in love with both music and art. The pair is next on What's Up South Texas. The night team's Jeffany Gray with their journey. inside the bubbles of I want to be an artist and a singer when I grow up. Properties of matter. To this is eight-year-old Lyric matters. Estrada. She loves science. Got this pretty rock. But she loves art and Selena more. She has an artistic love that some may say is in her genes. I've always had a passion for music or writing poetry. Which is why her dad, 31-year-old John Estrada, named her Lyric. You see, before Lyric, John wrote music and would DJ on the weekends. Once Lyric was born, I knew that it wasn't just for me anymore. And it was taking my, just myself and just focusing on her future. At first, John was fearful, especially since he and Lyric's mom separated. But having full custody of his daughter was a no-brainer. It was rough at first until I started to figure out, like, I got to beat the day before the day beats me. As a single father, John sought a strong and faith-based foundation for Lyric. He became a deputy with the Bear County Sheriff's Office to be a strong role model for her. So when she does have this man later on in the future or, or boyfriend later in the future, like long time, uh, <laughs> she's a uh, She's able to have a structure. Being a single dad and raising a daughter hasn't been easy. He struggled with doing her hair. Uh, like a six out of ten. <laughs> like a six? Man, I thought I was doing good. <laughs> Some homework. I don't know math. <laughs> and other things. Nevertheless. She writes me notes to uh, never give up and that I'm the best dad, so I think that helps me a lot. John still writes music and poetry, but his main focus now, his daughter's dreams. To spend more time with Lyric, John quit his job as a deputy and is in the process of starting his own trucking business. Their bond, stronger than ever with their love for God. I like him reading the Bible. And their love for each other's music, sometimes. What songs that have you heard that you really like that your dad has produced? None. <laughs> <laughs> he says he hopes his life experiences inspire her to continue reaching for the stars. You put your heart to it, you put your mind to it, you can get it. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Daphne Gray. Well, not everyone has a green thumb, but if you want a home filled with plants and flowers, we've got some tips on where to start, and you won't even have to move from your couch. That story, next on The Night Beat.
A little green goes a long way. At least that's what scientists say about the power of plants and your mental health. Spending just 20 to 30 minutes a day in a green space is said to boost your mood. Now more and more online shops are sprouting up and delivering plants right to your doorstep. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz checks them out. I think it was just a combination of the pandemic and then wanting to fill my new house with um, I guess things that are pretty. <laughs> Jody Pipcorn has a budding interest in house plants. I like to see the plants and I like to see the condition and like choose the one that I think is the healthiest. Um, so I've been a little nervous about ordering online. Plants in their prime, potted and ready to go. Consumer Reports checked out several online retailers that ship house plants, from biggies like the Home Depot and Amazon to curated collections from The Sill and Bloomscape, plus flower delivery services, books and urban stems. So what we're really looking for here is what you're getting and if it's worth what you're paying for. Bloomscape and The Sill's plants include care pamphlets and online help. Both offer trendy pots, too. This ZZ in a six inch pot from The Sill costs about $63. That's before tax and shipping. The same plant from Amazon costs $30 to $50, and depending on the seller, might include free shipping. For gift giving, books and urban stems offer guaranteed delivery dates and often next day, but it will cost you and selection is limited. This ZZ plant from Urban Stems is about $80. If you're looking for a more affordable option, consider swapping plants with friends or even join a buy nothing group on Facebook. And just going to a nearby nursery can save you some green. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. You can, uh, that lady doesn't have a cat. Because my cat would just be <laughs> yeah, yeah. all over yes. it. Yes, we ha we have some in the house, but they have to be larger, or else they get knocked down. Yeah, <laughs> that too. That too. I just try to keep them alive. <laughs> that uh, yes, that as well. The rain has helped. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, it's Especially been, with the hibiscus. Yeah. Oh man, I bet they're beautiful. I have some beautiful hibiscus in my yard. If you've seen them, there there's a debate <laughs> on what kind they are. But they're apparently Texas Star Hibiscus. Those Thank you to the viewers who are, who are watching and some of the people who informed me because I don't know anything about the plants in my yard. The, the pictures you posted, they're yes. so beautiful. So beautiful. So yes, we're thankful for the rains for that reason. I know it was pretty messy at some points last week, but we've got a drier forecast coming up this week. Give that water good time to soak down into our ground. I want to update you on the aquifer. It's been rising a good bit each day, of course. Uh, but since July 4th, again, keep in mind with our aquifer to really see its level rise. We want to see rainfall in the pink and purple areas inside the blue lines. And since last Sunday, we have gotten some really good bullseyes of rainfall, uh, so much so that the aquifer since this time last week is up nearly nine feet. We can't count on that in July most years, so that is some really good news. It's up to 670.2 today, a good bit above average for this time of year. At the airport, 74, our morning low spot on average for this time of year, but our high slightly below average and a good bit away from today's record high 104 from back in 1917. No rain at the airport today and looking ahead to the next seven days. Rainfall is going to be pretty scarce across the area. Those of you south and east of San Antonio actually I think have the best chance to pick up a little spotty rain each afternoon this week, but the blues and the purples that's more than one and two inches of rain over the next seven days. Notice that's all north of us, even north of Austin into parts of central Texas. So coverage of rain uh, the next few days is going to be right around 20%. That does include Monday as well, but we'll really start to fall into that pattern this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of just really isolated afternoon showers and non severe storms, mainly southeast of San Antonio down closer to the Gulf of Mexico. Tonight, the activity is all up to our north. We've got a stalled boundary uh, that's off to the north, really between San Angelo and Waco, and that's where some storms did fire off this afternoon with that boundary not moving much. These storms were stationary for a period of time, and now they're really just fizzling out and even moving off to the north. So that activity will stay off to our north tonight. And I do think this forecast model is actually overdoing the activity that's out there currently. So through the overnight hours, really quiet weather for us here. I can't rule out a spotty shower or a few sprinkles by early tomorrow morning as low clouds build back in. So be ready for a super muggy start to the day tomorrow with gray skies and high humidity heading into tomorrow afternoon. 
Expect we'll start to see a little bit more sunshine, hazy conditions because the dust still around tomorrow. And I'll be watching for uh, any thunderstorm activity that's lingering off to our north as we head toward midday tomorrow. If anything can fire up, we could have some leftovers of that activity start to wander our direction by tomorrow afternoon. But the rain is going to be very hit or miss if it can even wander our way at all tomorrow afternoon. So mainly just hot and humid for your Monday heading into Tuesday. I like what future cast is painting here. Showers possible more likely down closer to the Texas Gulf Coast south and east of San Antonio between uh, the Alamo City and Houston, and that's really how our rain chances will play out Tuesday and beyond this week. 80 now at the airport, 82 in Pleasanton, 79 in Carrizo Springs. It is muggy out there. We had a decent breeze this afternoon, but winds are starting to relax and they'll be pretty light tonight, just around five miles per hour. So that with the high humidity in the morning, it is going to be soupy out there to start the day as we head into tomorrow afternoon. Again, a low chance of a spotty shower high around 90. It'll feel a little hotter than that when you factor in the humidity. Uh, one more time for you here. I want to run through our Saharan dust forecast model. We're looking at uh, this plume continuing to filter in on Monday. Could be a little bit more dense tomorrow, so maybe a slightly more hazy look to things, but then it will filter out Tuesday into Wednesday and we'll get a break through the middle of the week, but another plume expected to move in by about Friday. We'll keep you updated this week, guys. All right, thank you. It should come as no surprise that the biggest pandemic area opening comes from Marvel. Your weekend box office report is next. Ronnie, what do we got? A Quiet Place Part 2 made $3 million for fifth place and a domestic total of $150 million. The Forever Purge fell to fourth with $6.7 million. The Boss Baby Family Business took third place on ticket sales of $8.7 million. After two weekends on top, F9 The Fast Saga dropped to second, earning $10.9 million for a domestic total of $141 million. Where are we trying to get? Motorbike, east side of the building. Black Widow set a new post-pandemic record for the biggest debut weekend, dominating the weekend with $80 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Big weekend for the box office. Mm -hmm. International soccer comes to the Alamo Dome this weekend with three of Mexico's top teams in the same U.S. city. Yep, and the AT&T Center is getting ready to host a world title fight. With more on what's an instant replay, let's head over to Greg Simmons. And at full capacity, yes. so yes. plenty of tickets available for that one. And what two athletes are added to our San Antonio Tower of Power? Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. He is considered to be the most popular spur in team history. And tonight we add Manu Ginobili to our Tower of Power, honoring those athletes who have honored San Antonio with their accomplishments. Who joins a four-time NBA champion tonight? And another major title goes to Novak Djokovic today as he claims his 20th Grand Slam victory at Wimbledon. This fight gonna solidify a lot of different things in people's mind about the Charlos. They're gonna know the difference between me and my brother. The AT&T Center is preparing to host a world championship fight card this coming Saturday night. That's where Jermel Carlo, who holds the WBA, WBC, and IBF super welterweight titles, meets Argentina's Brian Castano, who holds a WBO super welterweight title for the unification bout as a main event on the Showtime card. We'll get you ready, and the Alamo Dome hosts three of Mexico's top soccer teams this weekend. Who is leaving the Alamo City now as winners, we will show you. And should Texans fans be encouraged about what was revealed about Deshaun Watson over this weekend? The sports guys are Back tonight, instant replay is live, and it is next. Interesting offseason for him. He's working out. I can give you that much of a hint. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Greg. We'll see you in just a little bit. You got it. Well, after years of hard work, China's most famous native animal is no longer endangered. We're going to tell you something good next.